All right. Yeah, it say uh should be live. Let me check it. Okay, yeah, we got I just got the uh notification. Okay, yeah, me too. Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah, we got some. Uh, Con, con. <clears throat> All right, Shalom. Uh, first off, we're going to start off by giving our praise and glory unto Yahweh, Yahweh, the ones unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much love unto you, brothers out there, doing this work in truth and sincerity, and also peace and blessings unto the believers of the hopefully elect and in this lesson we're going to go into the book of isaiah chapter 60 and read through the whole chapter and break it down to the spirit of your how about she know shine and lord willing you brothers be comforted and edifying uh and edify salakia by this lesson now this chapter here in isaiah chapter 60 okay this chapter is going into the kingdom of heaven overall, all right? And if you question a Christian, okay, about this chapter, they'll be very confounded and confused by it because this chapter doesn't line up with their Christian beliefs. Because as of lately, you had this panel of black Christian pastors, all right, who was basically coming together to come against the Hebrew Israelites in so many words. And uh, one of the things that they made was that they didn't know how to address the Israelites because they don't understand our doctrine and what we're about. But those guys don't understand that the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is upon us. And you will never understand us unless the Holy Spirit is upon you, man. This truth that we have is very precious. And the Lord gave it to us, man, out of his mercy and grace. And so what we're going to do is just go through this chapter, man, all right, and uh, break it down, and uh, hopefully, as I said before, y'all edify. So, um, Parathon, which we to start off reading, brother, inside of Isaiah chapter 60. Gone. Go ahead. You got it. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Gone. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, and verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. Right. So let's do this first verse. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. Now, what is this light that has shined upon us or that has come unto us? It's Yahweh shine. It's this truth. It's the word. And we're going to prove that through precepts, okay? That the light that we have is Yahweh shine. It is this word, all right? So I want a brother to get the book of John, chapter 1. And start at verse 6. Get St. John chapter 1, start at verse 6. God, this John 1 and 6. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Uh-huh. So John came to bear witness to the light. But who was that light talking about? Keep reading, brother. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Right. See, John wasn't that light. Okay. John was a light, but he wasn't that light. That the the ultimate light. Okay. Go ahead, brother. That was the true light which lighteth every man 
that coming into the world. Right, the true light, right? The true light that lighted every man that coming into the world. Who are they talking about? Brother, go to John chapter 8 and verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. And let's see who are their light, okay? John 8 and 12. Oh, yes. Okay. Then spake Yahweh again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So Yahweh Shai, brothers and sisters, he is the light that has shined upon us. Now, in these present times, he is in a form of this book, of, of this Bible, okay? And through the giving of the Holy Spirit, we have been enlightened by this light of the word, okay? Through hearing men preach the gospel, we have been enlightened, okay? By the gospel, man. So now I want the brothers to get the book of Psalms, uh, 36 and verse 9, unless the brother got a precept. Because we can't see light or have the light without Yahweh shine. There is no other way to obtain this light, brothers and sisters, but through belief in Yahweh shine. Okay, go ahead, Doc. This is uh, Psalms 36 and, ver and verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. Right. In thy light shall we see light. So, we need Yahweh Shai to see light, man. Without Yahweh Shai, brothers and sisters, there is no light for us. So in the most hot light, which is Yahweh Shai, we see light. We see the truth now and understand now. Okay? And that light has shined upon us, as I said earlier, through hearing the gospel, through the preaching of the word, we have been enlightened. I got, I got, I got a one more precept. Then, uh, then, uh, uh, you brothers can go ahead on with your precepts. Get the Book of Psalms, chapter one nineteen, and verse one thirty. Psalm chapter one nineteen, and verse one thirty. Okay, in the Psalms one nineteen and one thirty, it says, "The entrance of thy words giveth light; it giveth understanding unto the simple." So the entrance. Of the heavenly father's word give it light and give it understanding to the simple and we have been enlightened all right brothers and sisters by the word man through the entrance of the word entering into our spirits we have been enlightened been awakening okay this is all poetic speaking all right in the scriptures man and we have the truth now and we are shining all right for the lord so all uh, you brothers and sisters got to so like you got a precept, brother? I got a quick one. This uh this John 12, John 12 and 35. It says, Then then yeah, how was I said unto them? Yet a little while is the light with you. And he was talking about himself. Is the light with you? Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he and that, you know, kind of like you said, that is John 11, you know, the, the hour come when no man can work of. You know, this the opportunity what we have, how was shot that light, which is what. Uh, it's within that repentance, you know, grace, you know, uh, this truth, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit, understanding, so on and so forth. So, as we have right now, we have that light. It says, uh, Let darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. And while you right. have light, believe in the light that you may be the children of light. These things speak your how shy and departed and did hear himself from them. But the point is, you know, as this truth is out now, you know, uh, like the scripture says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Right now, the light is out there. It can be found, you know, but it's, it's going to come that time when your how shy will be taken away, you know, but, you know, that's that's pretty much it. You got it out. Can I bring our precepts? Can I advertise a pie? got one. And Shalom, Zaquan, Shalom, Tadak, and Shalom, yeah, it is Isaiah 8 and 20. It says, to the law and to the testimony, it says, if they speak not according to this word, <laughs> it is because there is no light in them. You got it, all right? right? Yeah, so this word, this Bible is the light, man. 
And when you hear people who don't have the light, all right, they talk out of their own minds and their own vomit, okay? They don't speak according to truth, man. And as the elder said, that's why they don't understand us. Exactly. Because they don't have the light. They don't have Yahweh shot or the Holy Spirit. So it's hard to conceive what we're preaching, man. Right. It's like, it like, bro, like, what the hell are these, it, <laughs> what are these guys talking about? Why are you talking about chariots, you know, and, you know, being from the tribe of Judah and this tribe and different things, enslaving the nations? Right. Why are they saying these things for? Mm -hmm. They can't get it because they don't have the Holy Spirit, man. The only how you're going to understand us, brothers and sisters, unless you have the Holy Spirit. If not, you're not going to understand anything that come out of our mouths, man. Yep. Yeah, you might agree with some things, but overall, you're going to be offended, man. Because you're not in your house shop. All right, our brother got a precept. Con, wow. I, got quick, I got a quick precept. Con, go ahead, brother. This is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The which this is going in the prophecy, just backing up the brothers I Nala about how we was in that darkness, but the most high gave us that light. All right. Which it starts with faith. All right. The brother went through Yahweh Shai is ultimately the light, which we have Yahweh Shai right now in the volume of the book. Come on. So this is Isaiah chapter nine, verse two, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. So what, the world is seeing with the brothers out on the highways and the byways and putting up these lessons through the week, waking up to their nationality and coming back to Yahweh while Yahweh shy. All right. They're seeing prophecy unfolding. All right. The yeah. people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, America, upon them have the light shine. And this is where the Most High had prophesied that after 350 years, the Israelites would stand upon their feet and come back to the truth of the scriptures. All right. So, hey, hey, this is beautiful, man. The Most High is fulfilling prophecy where we was calling ourselves, you know, black, Latinos, Native Americans. We had our own uh, desires and and thoughts and goals in this world. Shit, the most high had us to wake up to the truth. And hey, that's beautiful, you know? Yeah. You got it out. The prophecy. Yeah. Like you yeah, said, probably, we, man. in the land of our captivity. Hey, in the land of our darkness, we seeing that light. <laughs> you know? We seeing that light. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that would have said about bro. y'all. So like, all right, you got it. No, I'm going to say, yeah, we, we saw it. In the midst of this darkness, in the midst of us coming up, you know what I'm saying, being Babylonians, the mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, man, and allow right. brothers and sisters to see the light, man. Hey, that's cool. Hey, yeah. So, yeah, I was about to say that's cool. Even Paul, when he fell off the horse, he said he seen that light. Yeah, that <laughs> like, light. That's cool, man, you know. Right. Yeah, brother, go back to that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so go back to Isaiah chapter 60, brother, for Paul Throne. God. This is Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but Yahweh but Yahweh shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be, be seen upon thee right so it says for behold darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. And brothers and sisters, we see this today. The people in the world are in gross darkness. They're blinded. They're wicked. Okay? They don't have the truth, man. So, when we present this light unto them, it seems strange. Yeah, they like, turn off the light. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like, what is this? Because Jake want to be comfortable in their darkness man a real fast brother get john three i, I got yeah. it go, go ahead brother you got a lot go ahead yep. <laughs> this, john, got go ahead. this john three and i'm gonna start at 17 it says for the most high sent not his son into the world to condemn the world 
but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of the most high. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Right. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Break it, it says, down. Yep, and that's the thing, you know, uh, a lot of people don't want to come into the truth and make them feel uncomfortable. Why? Because now they being exposed. You know, their wickedness is being put out there. You know, and look, Jake, Jake loved their wickedness. You can't tell them no wrong. <laughs> right. can't, their grandmother did it. My, my grandfather did it. You see? But when they come into this truth, what? One, you have to repent. Jake don't want to repent. You know, like an alcoholic. Alcoholics don't want to be told what they did the night before when they blacked out. You know, they don't want, Jake don't want to be told what they've been doing while they blacked out, that light go expose you, man. You know, you hey, what it is in Sirach, nobody got to get it, but it says even men commit adulteries because they think they're in the dark, nobody see them. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You commit to this thing, you're going to have to, you're going to have to show, you know, to the Lord, of course, but those ways will have to be put out. But again, our people don't want to do it. They like living in their wickedness, you know, and it says, right. hey, like, uh, you know, what they say in the church, come as you are. Right, right. right. Yeah, you can come as you are, but you're gonna change what, what you was, you know. And it says, For everyone that doeth evil, see, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And Jake don't want to change again. Right. I uh Zanala, what you said about a week or two ago. Yeah, the brotherhood is love, you know, camaraderie. But what shows a true brotherhood if brothers if if you have arguments, certain arguments over certain things, that shows a true brotherhood. Why? Because certain things go, you know, get talked about. Y'all will have disagreements. You right. know, you will get rebuked. Those things come with it. So when you come to the light, you have men who have a uh, proper judgment. So we're going to get corrected on things. But our right. people, we've been in that mindset of you can't tell me nothing. All right. Let me live my truth. Let me live my life. But here we ain't living our own life, man. And everybody can't get down with, uh, with that. That's why John the Baptist says fruits meet for repentance, man. You know? And right. they, I finish it off and it says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in the most high, man. You know? Right? Yeah, a brother priest about? Anybody yeah, got, I got one? I got one. Come on, go ahead, brother. You got it. Let me bring it up. Uh, Second Corinthians 4 and verse 4. Why they don't get it? Because you had said... Hey, I'll sign it three. I'll sign it three. Please, please try to come, brother. Come, come. Uh, Second Corinthians, um, verse uh, chapter four, verse three. They say, "But if the gospel be hid, is it hid to them that are lost?" Verse four. In whom the God of this world, and that world right there, you look it up as I am, you know, okay, a period. And the God of this world, we know that's that wicked Esau. You know, they they found the version of the, the image of the. You know, they the philosopher is devil, they drunk out Babylon wine, you know. So wow. they say, in the God of this world had blind the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the that's a slack it, lest the light of the the uh slack it. Let me slow down, lest the light of the glo uh, glorious gospel of the Mashiach, Yahweh who is the image of the Most High, should shine upon them. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, they don't want to, they don't want to turn back and be converted back to the ways of Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. You know, they comfortable in they, in wickedness, man, you know. Con, con, I, yeah, yeah, brother, a beautiful precept, man. Jake is blinded by the God of this world, Esau, as the brother had said. They're so called into Babylon, and their wickedness to the point to where Jake hate righteousness, man. And we've all seen it, man. All experience, mm -hmm. you know, talking to family members, talking to different people in the world. These people really got a hatred for righteousness, man. But the Lord blinded them like that, you know, because he says inside Isaiah that I would choose your delusions. And Jake have a multitude of of a of a uh, I just say a delusion in their minds, man. Completely bugged out. But the gospel of Yahweh shot, all right, the light has helped us out, man, and has brought us out of darkness who was once in that gross darkness, man. All of us was in it. Well, I should say most of us, you know, because some brothers had the luxury of knowing that they were Israelites, you know what I'm saying, from a child. 
But most of us came out of darkness, man, came out of wickedness, came out of abominations. But the Heavenly Father had mercy, man. Through the grace of Yahweh Shah brought, the, we was able to come into the faith, man. And I got a preset real fast inside the book of Psalms. This is Psalm chapter 18 and verse 28. All right. Psalm 18, verse 28, it says, For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. So our our darkness, brothers and sisters, was enlightenment, meaning that we came out of that folly, out of that wickedness, out of those abominable works. We have been enlightened through the word, man, through the entrance of the word. We've been enlightened unto righteousness, man, unto the truth, okay? And that's the beauty of this thing, man. And only the elect in these times will be enlightened. Two thirds, they will remain in gross darkness and abominations, man, until they're destroyed. But as for us who had this truth, brother out there, sister out there, hold on to it, man. Give diligence, okay? Cleave unto this word, man. Don't be slothful. Don't be half assed man. Don't be lukewarm. If you had this truth, brother and sister, all right, out there, you hold on to it, man. Because your life depends on it. Your salvation depends on it, man. God. If you don't do it to the end, if you fight a good fight until the end, our Lord, your house, I'm going to crown you with glory and salvation, man. And everything they're going to read inside of Isaiah chapter 6, you know. So if everybody got another precept, we're going to read Isaiah chapter 6, you know. I got a little precept. I, I think Go ahead, you what you said sometimes. We was in darkness. So I want to get Ephesians 5 and verse 8. He said, For we were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. You know, by Shem Yahushai, walk as children of light. Come, beautiful, brother. Beautiful. We were once children of darkness, man, but now we are children of light. And this is why our families, you know, our so called friends, think we're crazy now, think that we're strange. Because we have come to light, man. And now brothers have a standard in their lives, man. Because through the law, the law is a standard, bro. You can't be no fruit fly, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You can't yeah. commit adultery and serve idols and do all manner of abominations, man. The law is a standard, bro. And we have this standard in our lives, okay? And this is why most people don't like dealing with us, man. Man, you know, man, but, but he, but he always come out to my some pork chop, man. The hell, you don't know pork chop and shrimp and lobster, but he always talking about, you know, God. But he always my God all the time. Mm -hmm. They offended by righteousness, man. This is this world. They in grow darkness, brothers and sisters. But be thankful for this truth, man. Be thankful for what you have, because what we have going to lead to everlasting life, man. All right. It's going to lead unto us receiving these blessings in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 60. So go ahead, Doc. God, this Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 3. Then the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. It says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. These Gentiles are talking about us. And verse 4 is going to prove that. It's talking about us brothers and sisters, man, who was in the world bugged out, but we saw light through the prophet, right? Some of the apostles and elders preaching the gospel, and we were drawn to their light, man. We came to the light to the truth. To Yahweh Shah, man. Now I want the brothers to get the book of Acts, um, chapter 13, read verse 46 and verse 47. Because we were those Gentiles that came to the prophets who were set up as lights by Yahweh Shai. That's Matthew 5 of 14 through 16. Okay, that yeah. we be lights into the world, man. And we saw those lights and we came to it, man. Go ahead, Ock. Acts. This is Acts 13 and 46. 
It says, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of the Most High should first have been spoken to you. It says, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Right. So the apostles, man, and prophets were set up as lights to bug out Jakes, to lost Jakes, man. So Jake can look unto them for salvation, man. And that's the state that we in right now, brothers and sisters. Stop our apostles and elders on down. We have been set up as lights unto the loss of our people, man. For those who are in darkness of the elect who will see us who preaching the gospel and they'll come to the light, man. Basically, they come into Yahweh shine because that's what we're preaching, not ourselves and our glory. We preach Yahweh shine, our Lord and Savior, man. Right. That's who you come to. Mashiba that's my who you're obedient unto, man. Our Lord. So go ahead. I'll make inside Isaiah. I've got no precept. I'll go back to Isaiah. Right? Kind of Isaiah chapter. 60 verse 4 lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together they come to thee thou sons and thou sons shall come from far and thou daughters shall be nursed at thy side right and we're being gathered right now by the word but Yahweh shy the angels are going to physically save us and gather the sons and daughters of the elect of the Israelites, man. This is going to come to pass. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So verse five is going into us, brothers and sisters, all right, getting the riches and the wealth of the heathens, man. The abundance of the sea and the forces of the wealth of the Gentiles, man. All of that coming unto us, man. Though we suffer right now inside of our apartments, you know, our little houses that we got, you know, thing that we have is really nothing, but we appreciate it because the most I gave it to us. But in the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters, we're going to have abundance more than your heart, your mind can wish, man, and righteousness, okay? This is what Isaiah is going into, us receiving the goodies of the planet Earth, man. We haven't seen everything yet, bro, and experienced everything yet. The Earth has a lot to offer, bro. These heathens are sitting on riches, man. These heathen nations, they're sitting on riches. But in the kingdom of heaven, guess what's going to happen? They're going to bring it unto us. Everything that we want, everything that we wish in our minds, they're going to bring it, man. And this is what Isaiah is going into. Go ahead, brother. Yep. Um, Bible Kashah, may I bring out a precept? Go ahead, brother. You got it. Out to something you just said. Jeremiah 32 and 42. For thus said Yahweh, like as I have brought all these great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Come on. Yeah. So just adding on to what you were saying, you know, though we catch hell, it was all written. The good part written as well. And that's what exactly. we're going into. And as you said, you know, we don't we don't get to experience the, you know, Eden which is paradise, which that's talking about the earth. But these heathen do. But even the, the, the pleasures that the heathen are enjoying, especially Esau, our kingdom is going to far outweigh that because the scripture said, I have not seen neither ear heard. So our kingdom is going to be glorious. You know? no, no human being has experienced the life that we will live in righteousness. All right, it's going to be amazing. 
Are you, you got it up? Come, on, come, on, yeah. I'll go back to the, I'll go back into the scripture. I'll verse six now. Yep. This um Isaiah sixty and six, the multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. Right now, what was camels used for in the ancient world to carry different luggages and heavy loads, man? Those camels, brothers and sisters, are going to be carrying our resources, man. From the other lands, they're gonna bring them on camels. All right, a dromedary is a basically is a baby camel or 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 a uh, young camel. All right, so the heathen gonna have camels loaded with goods, man, for us to bring to your providence, brother. To your, you know, what I'm saying to your section of the earth. And you're gonna be balling for eternity. All right, go ahead, I. Yeah, I, and like you said though, uh, it said a, a dameteri for a reason, a young camel for a reason. They in all their strength to, to carry right, yeah. all, all that on their backs, man. Right. Yeah. And now, um, our brother, real fans, get the book of Tobit, chapter thirteen, and verse eleven, because it says that. Oh uh, no, 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 no. Hold on, brother. Offend that scripture out, out first, and then get that Tobit. Right. It's uh, 60 and 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Median and Ephah. And they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praise of Yahweh. Right. These heathen nations, brothers and sisters, are going to bring us golds and incense, man. And brother love the incense, you know, the friends in the myrrh. But it's much more out there, man. Mm -hmm. It's so much more out there, bro, that we don't even know about, that we haven't experienced. Guess what? Brothers going to get a chance to experience it, man, and have all of the abundance and the blessings of the earth, man. The planet Earth is beautiful. Esau just jacked it up. But the earth is beautiful, man. So many benefits to it, man. And the Lord made it for the Israelites' sake. He made this earth perfect for our sake, man, so that we can enjoy it. And in the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters, we will enjoy it for eternity, man. Go ahead, brother. Yo, hey, I, I can remember the, the scripture say he the Lord planted a garden eastward in the whole right. world yeah. of paradise. Right, the whole earth, yeah. <laughs> the main hub just in Israel, which is we going to get there first and foremost, but the whole this whole thing is Eden, man. And look, like the brother been saying, the Lord gonna have hey, what it said, a new heavens. I we was talking about about a couple of weeks ago after count, a new heaven. And right. the new earth, we're gonna have a new earth. Ain't no telling what this new earth, the the, the geographical locations, right, right, the right. New, you know, shapes of the the you know lands, who knows, man, what with, with the new trees, new animals. Come right. on, man. You know, right? Yeah, balling out, man. The Lord got some gonna... yeah, bro. The Lord got some stuff prepared for us, man. They're gonna truly blow our minds, right. I got one a precept real quick because you said that. So like it. Go ahead, so, bro. You got it. Okay, this uh second measure is five and and 40, right? Now, when you go into this again, Ezra was complaining, like, Lord, if you chose us to be your chosen people, then why are you putting us through all this affliction? Why are you letting these heathens who you don't love rule over us? He didn't understand the judgments of the heavenly father. So this was the most high answer to him. It's second measure is four and 39. It says, this Ezra speaking, as for me, I am unwise, and how may then I speak of these things whereof thou askest me? Verse 40, then said he unto me, like as thou canst do none of these things which I have spoken of, even so canst thou not find out my judgment, but this is the point, or, this is what Ezra couldn't find out either, or in the end, the love that I have promised unto my people, man. That's that I have not seen either or heard. We can't even fathom the love that the Most High really got for us. If this would it look like on the left hand side when He put us through affliction, I want to see what the right hand side gonna be when that Deuteronomy, what it is, one through fourteen, kick in, man. Twenty eight, one through fourteen, you know. Uh, but that's that's it, you know. The love that I have promised to His people in the end, man. You got it, out. Right, yeah. Go to Isaiah, brother. Oh, no, no, no. 
I read that Tobit now. Read Tobit. So like, okay. yeah, I read that Tobit, brother. I, I got it. It's Tobit 13 and 11. It says, many nations shall come, uh, many nations shall come from far. Shit, I, I'm going to start at 10. It's uh, Tobit 13 and 10. It says, give praise to the Lord for he is good and praise the everlasting king that his tabernacle may be builded in thee again with joy and let him make joy, joyful there in those that are captives and love in thee forever those that are miserable. And it says, and many nations shall come from far to the name of Yahweh power with many gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of heaven. It says, and all generations shall praise thee with great joy and curse. Right. Yep, you got it. Right, yes, they come with gifts in their hands, brothers and sisters. But gifts, all right, of their land. Different resources, different possessions, man. They're going to bring it unto us, okay? Gifts. Go ahead, brother, back in the Isaiah. Sissy, y'all. If I can bring a precept. Oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead, brother. You got it. Just a, it's just a chapter over uh, Isaiah 61. I'm going to get straight to the point. Uh, verse 6. He said, but you shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Man shall call you minister of the most, <coughs> our most uh, of, the, uh, of our power. You should eat the riches of the Gentile. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So just going back to the point, they're going to bring us all day they system, they resources, man. And we're going to be posting in it. <laughs> you know, that's right. going into the kingdom of heaven, you know. We're going to be right. in the yep, riches. Resources. Right. Blessings on top of blessings, brothers and sisters. And this is right. why it's worth the fight, man. This is worth the fight, bro. We're going to be blessed abundantly for eternity. Man, I'm trying to fight for this, bro. I'm not I ain't trying to do nothing else. <laughs> I'm trying to get there with the Lord talking about, man. Go ahead, I, Isaiah 60, I. Yeah, this is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaoth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Right, keep going. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Right over the chariots. Go ahead, brother. Surely the owl shall wait for me in the ships of Tarshish first to bring thou sons from far their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yahweh thou God. And to the Holy One of Israel, because he had glorified thee. Right. So basically, verse 5 through 9 is going through how the heathens are going to bring us their wealth, basically. The best of what they have. All we're going to bring to the land of Israel, man. And we're going to be blessed beyond measures. All right. I'll keep reading, brother. <clears throat> verse 10. In the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So the sons of the heathen nations, they will build up the kingdom of heaven for us. Just as we build it, the kingdom of the heathens, they will build the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be a lot of slaves, man. Because brother's going to be balling. Brother want good plush houses. Like I, like, I can already try to somewhere picture my house, but I can't picture it. But I know I know that, look, I want some good. I want some, look, Lord said, look, if you go, uh, 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 what do you say? If you go, uh, if you go uh, three storages, uh, uh, stories. Stories. Right, yeah. A battlement. So, hey, I'm trying to have mine all decked out, all right, and looking uh, good. <laughs> you feel uh, me? <laughs> I want to do how the Lord want me for to do it, but in righteousness, man. 
This is what's coming unto us, brothers and sisters. These heathens will be our slaves. And this is what Christianity can't conceive. A Christian can't conceive, verse 10. Isaiah 16 and 10 calls trouble for a Christian, man. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10 calls trouble for a Christian. They don't know how to respond to it. Because they're being taught love, happiness, everybody together, kumbaya, honey buns and shit. No. In the kingdom of heaven, the children of Israel will enslave every non-Israelite. Yep. Thus said the Bible. These are not my words. The Bible is saying this, man. I bring out a precept. There's uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. It says, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Instead, them and their own land is going to us in our kingdom. It says, And the strangers shall be joined with them. Now, these strangers is what we was talking about at the beginning of the chapter. Those Gentiles that seen that light, man, you know, and cleave and cleave to that, which is how Shai said in John 17 and 20. Uh, that he didn't just pray for the, his prophets alone, but those also which believed on him through their word. Man, they see in that light and cleaved unto it. And it goes no, on to say, you got, should a brother say something? No, 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 go ahead. I would okay. agree with you, brother. Yep. It says, and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So once we get in the kingdom, it says, and the people shall take them, which is the heathens, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors, man. You mm. know, but on the flip side, which prove is gonna be that great gulf fix in between Israel and the heathens and Esau and them, because the next verse says, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest. From thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That's our release, man. This is our last captivity. And Lamentations 4 said this is the last one under Esau. You know, so once that happened, we're gonna rule forever. Now it's time for us to get that payback, man. Now all nations are gonna have to serve us. We didn't have a choice. We the Lord chosen people, and we didn't have a choice. And look what he did to us. How much more nations when it says uh y'all are less than nothing, like drops of spit, man. You know, or, or thou not he who shall altogether, altogether go unpunished, thou shalt not go unpunished, man. But we in that time where this is about to be fulfilled, you know, y'all got it. I got a precept to back the brother up, Karab, you don't mind. I... Come on, I, you got it not. Uh, this is Isaiah 49 and verse 23. And the king shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick the dust and lick up the dust off thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for him. Hey, we waiting on that, man. That's what we waiting for, man. You know, patiently waiting for it, bro. Come on. Yeah, I got a preset positive. Y'all want that? No, nah, y'all got it. Come on. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 1. 49 and verse 5, it says, let the saints be joyful in glory, meaning in the kingdom of heaven. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. The bed is representing comfort, us being at ease. Okay? It says, let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye Yahweh. So according to this prophecy here of the kingdom of heaven in Psalms 149, the saints will have a sword in their hand. They will execute vengeance upon the heathen. Isaiah chapter 60 is talking about vengeance upon the heathen. It says to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. If you read Isaiah chapter 60, it tells you that, that their kings may be brought. Brought how? Inside of chains to serve us, man. 
as we came in chains and served them. Brother Moses, how beautiful. He, he had his he had his written before we got in, before we went into slavery. He had this written. That's right. Yeah. He knew what we were gonna go through and be shamed how we were shamed. Well, guess what coming yeah. up to you heathens, man? Pure yeah. shame. Deuteronomy 30, 30 and verse 7. Say what? The curse is coming upon y'all. Y'all gonna be put to shame. Y'all gonna have broken families, living in the gutter, bad diets, okay? Suffering, losing. That's coming up to y'all, man. I'm gonna get Esau cancer in the kingdom. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, cancer brother. AIDS. I'm gonna give him AIDS. <laughs> Straight hey, up. look, brother. Hey, man, I'm gonna hey, tell her wear a mask. God, I'm gonna tell her wear a mask. Yeah, Everybody. yeah, put a mask on, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, look, hey, look. Hey, uh, all his kids getting, you know, say, uh, getting the juice as soon as they born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get this juice, boy. Straight up. <laughs> it was how you do us, man. But it can be done in righteousness, okay? Okay. You eat might saw a bunch of low life devils, man. And you have. Put your hands on the children of the living God, Yahweh. And you got to pay for that, nigga. You're going to pay for that, man. Isaiah 60 going into that. Of you and all the heathen nations getting paid back, man. Right. To your faces. All right? Go ahead, back to Isaiah 60, y'all. Okay. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 11. It says, Therefore thy gates shall be open continually they shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the gentiles and that their kings may be brought brothers and sisters this is glory man our gates should be open continually man whatever you want brother sister out there whatever you want anything that your heart desires them heathens gonna be on camels and jackasses traveling right to right. bring us whatever we want. And we and look in the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters, we're gonna know the earth, man. And what the best stuff that we're gonna already know where is that. We're gonna tell them, hey, look, you go over here to, to uh Iran and go down this way and you know so uh make a right and dig, goddammit. Dig, dig for them precious stone down there. Right. Dig for them, dig got, for that. Frankincense over there. <laughs> right, yeah. You see it over there. Go get it, nigga. Load up. Bring us what, bring us what ours, bro. Because the earth is ours. Most I gave it right. unto us. Right. It's right. his, but he gave it unto us. He gave it, he gave it unto Yahweh Shai. Then although Yahweh Shai gave it unto us, man. Go ahead, I'll make an Isaiah. Kind. That's what the scripture said. We uh joint heirs with Yahweh Shah. Uh heir received the inheritance from the father. Right. So, verse 13. It says no, 12, 12, 12. Okay, um, uh, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 12. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. This is not a parable. This is not a dark saying. This is literal. If you don't want to serve the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven, in which I highly doubt, you're going to die. How about that for the Christian church? How do Christians respond to this verse? Who is this talking about, Christian? Who is Isaiah 60 verse 12 is talking about? It's talking about the heathen nations, man, that don't want to serve the Israelites, they're going to die. But I highly doubt it if they are refused to serve us, man, because they're going to see the power. They're going to see the chariots, all that. And they're going to know to submit unto us, man, to do what we say to do at all times. That's the power that we're going to have on the planet Earth, man. To put a heat into death if you don't want to get right. That's the power we're going to have. And righteousness, man. Whatever we tell you for to do, you're going to do it, nigga. 
You're going to do everything we say to do, man. In righteousness, okay? Go ahead, Ock. It's Isaiah 60 and 13. The Go ahead, Ock. Nah, because I, I, you know how we here and they expect us to even follow the hot, well, not hot holidays, but holidays. Right. And the brother got it right here. The holidays, Christmas, you know, Easter, right? Things, so on and so forth. And if you speak against them, then you the problem. You well, the look, problem. That's right. going to be the same way for us. Once you get not camp, they're going to have to follow our, our holy days. You're going to have to keep what we keep. You're going to have to follow the same laws we follow, man. You know, and I'm going to grab it real quick to Zechariah 14. And 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Hey, they, they ain't got no choice. You know, us, we in their kingdom, but we got a choice. <laughs> you know, right, we, ain't right, yeah. we, ain't have, we don't have to celebrate Thanksgiving. We have a choice. Y'all ain't going to have no choice. Y'all going to have to do it, man. You know, uh. it says, uh, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. We can cut off your whole supply. That's your crops, right. whatever, whatever we want. And what it say in Revelation 11, uh, smite with plagues as often as they will. You know, verse 18, and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be uh, there shall be the play wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it, you know, it goes on. I'm going to read it. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles, man. And that goes for everything we say, though. You know, you got it out. Right. Yeah, man. Y'all going to obey our commandments. That's Isaiah 2 and Micah chapter 4. Y'all going to come to us and learn how to live. Learn about righteousness, and that will be your life and standard from here on out. So go ahead back to Isaiah, brother. Let's see, got nothing out. Isaiah 60. God, in verse 13, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Yes. The place of the Lord's feet is talking about the planet Earth. So in other words, he's going to bless the Earth again, man. And make it like Eden again. But even better. Okay. Real fast, a brother grab Isaiah 51 and verse 3. And also grab um, Ezekiel 36 and 35. God, I got the Ezekiel 36. Read it. Go ahead, brother. Ezekiel 36 and 35. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. The garden of Eden, man. The land going to be blessed. The whole earth going to be blessed again. But especially the land of Israel. That land is going to be blessed, man. Enlarged, okay? That land is going to be the best land in all. <laughs> and I, look, bro, in all the earth, the land of Israel is the best land, according to the Most High. And the Lord is going to bless it once again. But all the earth are right now. Read Isaiah, brother. Okay, Isaiah 51 and verse 3. He say, for Yahweh, for Yahweh shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all their waste places. And he will make their wilderness like Eden. And their desert like garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Right. The Lord going to bless the earth again, man. And beautify it. Okay. <laughs> we'll know how to do right now. But we know that it's gonna happen. And the Lord is gonna bless the earth, man. And I can't wait to see the Lord willing, bro. I can't wait to see how beautiful the earth is gonna look, man. The smell, okay. 
the Lord is going to truly bless the earth, man. And this is what Isaiah is going into. Go ahead, Isaiah 60, brother. Okay. This is verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Right. Those who afflicted us, man. Starting with Esau, Edom. But all the heathen nations, man. Y'all are going to come unto us, bending unto us, man. At the soles of our feet. Because we're going to be kings and priests. Or God kings, as uh, Xerxes said. He said he was a God king. You know that nigga, you want nothing, nigga. You a ballin', but you know God king. We're gonna be real God kings in the in the kingdom of heaven, man. Real rulers. Okay, brand new bodies, looking good, smelling good, doing our thing. And y'all gonna obey us, man. And we're gonna have the we're gonna have the a dominion over the earth, man, over the universe. And y'all gonna bow down when brothers and sisters and our children uh, come present, man. Y'all gonna bow down as you're supposed to do. Go ahead, brother. Okay, verse 15, it says, Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Right, an eternal excellency, brothers and sisters. So for eternity, we will be excellent, blessed, glorified, man, majestic, held in high esteem. The Lord's going to truly bless us, man, and we can't even conceive it right now, but once it happens, brothers and sisters, man, it's going to be amazing. More than amazing. This is what's coming unto us, man. Go ahead, I'll let your brother got a precept. Go ahead, I. It says, verse 16, thou, thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, that I am Yahweh and the thou Savior and thou Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Right, you're sucking the milk and sucking the breast of the Gentiles. It's just poetic speaking of us taking their riches, their goods. It's poetic speaking, but it's talking about us getting their resources, man. Go ahead, Doc. For brass, I will bring gold, and for iron, I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stone, stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. Right, go ahead. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Right, so in other words, brothers and sisters, no other nation will ever invade our land and besiege us. And kill our elderly, our women, our children, and take us and take us into captivity, man. That's gonna be unheard of in the kingdom of heaven. We're gonna be balling, but we're gonna have superpowers, okay? Gods, man. No nation will ever attack us ever again. The cities of Israel will never burn again. The cities of Judah never burn again, man. This is what we got to look forward to, man. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 19, the sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But Yahweh shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thou God, and thou God, thou glory. Right, verse 19, once again, brothers and sisters, is poetic speaking. The sun and the moon is representing understanding, wisdom, knowledge, this truth, okay? So we will never lose 
this truth again. Never forget about your how about how was shy again. It will be everlasting unto us, okay? And verse 20 is gonna basically say the same thing. Go ahead, Doc. Now, I say something, might I say something for you? Come, come, go ahead, Doc. That I was thinking about that will be the fulfilling of the second covenant when the law of the commandment be written in our inward parts. Right, yep, yeah. yep, brother. Beautiful point. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to make that point. Okay. Verse 20. Thou son, thou son shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Meaning what? We'll never lose the truth again, once again. We will never forget this, brothers and sisters, ever. We're going to know you how by Hashem was shot for eternity, man. Go ahead, Doc. For Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Right. Our everlasting light, as we started off with. This truth, man. Everlasting. It will never go away ever again. And it says, in the days of thy morning shall be ended, man. This is what we're really looking forward to, man. We're looking forward to our mourning, our suffering, our affliction to be ended, man. Our captivity to be ended, brothers and sisters. This brother on the coming board, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Devante Moon. I'll, I'll put his comment about. Yeah, he said, um, when is the Lord coming back, man? I can't stay here no more. Hey, look, bro, you got to be patient, not Like all of us being patient. We know that he coming real soon, you know, and we see the signs. But what day and hour, no man know it. The angels don't know yet. How was himself don't know the exact day? But he gave us different things to look out for to know that his second coming is approaching quickly. Okay. So just can you know say uh just continue to fight, brother. No, uh, keep on praying, keep on pushing on, man. Because our salvation at the doors, man. It's close. Only yeah. a few, right? Yeah, it's only a few major prophecies left, you know, to happen, man. The uh, main one is the mark of the beast, also the, the uh, uh, destruction. But after those things, it's salvation from here on out. It's everlasting joy and peace from here on out, man. I get a chance to enjoy our children for eternity. Our multiple wives, and yes, I said multiple wives, for eternity. And complete joy and happiness, man. So go ahead, Doc. Con, I was just think, um, just want to add on to the comment. As you were saying, the brother just exercised patience. Yeah, this place is bad, but it's about to get fucking worse. Yeah, about to get worse. And, you, know, you talking about you can't stay here no more. Yeah, I feel you, but at the same time, Jacob Trouble not even here yet. So you got to gird up your loins like a man. You know, this place sucks for all of us. But we got a lot more hell to go through. You know? So, hey, just... Hey, be a man. Stay in the spirit, you know. Ask the most high for strength because we're going to need it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to need it for the for the times that, like no other, we're going to need it. All right? Come on. So, Come on, brother. Beautiful, beautiful. Right. Go ahead, brother. This is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 21. Thou people also okay. shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Yes. Verse 21 is talking about us receiving the, the new covenant. Okay. Us receiving the laws, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts and in our spirits. We are all going to be righteous. Every single last Israelite will be righteous. In the kingdom of heaven. That's the blessing of the new covenant. We will never sin again. Therefore, we will never die. The Lord is going to program us, in so many words, to be completely righteous. 
to be like him. That's the blessing of the kingdom, man. Right. All the Israelites being righteous as the Most High intended. That's going to be fulfilled through the new covenant, brothers and sisters. All right. Uh, Jeremiah 31, 31, Hebrews 8 and 8. Read those, you know, scriptures about the new covenant. But it's other scriptures, you know. Uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Yep. But go ahead, I. Yep. It says Isaiah chapter 60 and 22 A little one shall become a thousand And a small one a strong nation I, Yahweh, will hasten it in his time Verse 22, brothers and sisters Is going unto us multiplying Or I should say Having intercourse in the kingdom of heaven An Israelite man becoming From a small family into a mighty nation. Unto a strong nation. And the Lord said he's going to hasten it in his time. Meaning what? He's going to bless us. Every time that a brother. Quote unquote. Um, lay down with his wife. She will conceive seed. There will be no. Um, ab abortion in the kingdom of heaven. Miss okay. God. Huh? I said miscarriages. Yeah, yeah, no miscarriages, no birth control. That would not be in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, every woman, every woman will be pregnant. Okay? Every single last one of them. They're gonna be pregnant. Okay. As soon as she comes unto the flower of her age. All right. And when she, quote unquote, have that period, you know, and drop them eggs. Now, I don't know how the new body going to work. I don't know how the new body is going to work. I'm just speaking for what we go through right now. To give you an understanding, of, you know, of, of, of how it's going to be. Once that happens, once you get to the, to the flower of her age, every Israelite woman will conceive seed. And she's going to bring forth. I don't know how many children. You know, the 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 uh, brother Karab Bar, you know, to get an example on the block of a woman in these times, conceiving seed, you know, bringing for eight kids, you know, ten kids. And I saw the TV show. It was called uh, K Plus Eight. Something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, K Plus Eight. When she had eight babies, I was like, damn. So imagine how the kingdom of heaven gonna be, as the brother had said. I know to how many kids they're gonna have at one time. Who knows? But the Lord gonna hasten it in his time. So for any Negro, right, the brother said no child support, right? <laughs> right. Right, right here, yeah, yeah, brother. Hey, no child support, no, no baby mama drama, no arguing. You no, know, you leaving your family, you know, and gonna get your own apartment in the kingdom. <laughs> they ain't gonna be happening. They ain't gonna be happening, man. No child support. Your woman gonna be in order, and she gonna love you. Oh, but she gonna love you. I, you brothers out there, your woman gonna love you. She gonna love every bit of you, and she gonna be yearning to have your children. She gonna be yearning, wanting your kids, bro. The hundred forty-four thousand. Oh man, they they look. They gonna be yearning to have your child, brother. Hey, they talk about you know. In this current world, they are uh, talking about how you know how at a uh, uh, Chris Brown, you know, concerts, he be having, you know, 10, you know, or uh, 20,000 women passing out for him, you know, and going crazy over him. Boy, that ain't nothing, boy. Now, in this world, that's something in this world, you know, but in the world to come, 20,000, that's an easy number, boy. Good. The, 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 that's a light number. I ain't gonna tell you how many women gonna be going crazy for you, brothers out there who endure to the end, man. Right. Hey, they, hey, look. Of course, Isaiah four and one. They're gonna go crazy for you in this time, man. One of you in this time because they're gonna see the spirit of the Lord upon you. 
And they're going to want to get with you, brother, to be protected, man. And with the Lord, you know what I'm saying? The Lord going to gather them, you know what I'm saying, to save them, you know what I'm saying, for his purpose. But yeah, man, in the kingdom of heaven, according to this prophecy, there will be intercourse in the kingdom, man, and righteousness, okay? Because how sexy is today, as the elder to go into, right, the, the uh, elder Yashwamba, it's all tainted, man. It's all demonic, you know? It's not pure. But in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be pure, man. Your woman that you're going to have, brother, is going to be your woman. Only you will have intercourse with her, man. And she's going to be all yours. Guess what? You'll never get tired of her. Okay? None of that, none of that stuff that we had today. You, you, you know, it's like getting bored. Man, I don't tell how final we're gonna be in the kingdom of heaven. We don't know. But it's gonna be in righteousness. A brother got a precept. And you know how uh, now in the world when you know a woman shaved nice, they what they you know the old saying she a, a brick house. Right, yeah, brick house, you right. Know, scripture in Psalms, uh King David was going into the kingdom and he said, How how thy daughters shall be shaped like palaces. So that and Matt, if you know we use the slang as a brick house, the woman she fine. How much more are we likening it to a palace? How much more are they gonna be founded in? You know, think about their shapes then, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, man. Our, hey, our women gonna be beautiful. Double King, they were basically saying that they're gonna be beautiful, all right, and 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 righteously, you know what I'm saying, adorned in that apparel, you know, so looking good, bro. Oh my oh man, you're gonna be balling, brothers. Okay. Mm -hmm. This whole chapter is a faith booster, man. Huh. For when you're going through things, read Isaiah chapter 60. This is a powerful chapter, man. Because you know that, brother, sister, if you make it through your hell, if you endure what you got to endure and stay faithful until the end, man, man the Lord going to bless you. Bless you all. Thing that we haven't yeah. seen, the Lord going to bless us with it, you know? So, a brother got to. Um, a precepts on deck, if not, we're ready to close it out, you know. Uh uh, uh, yeah, man. Hey, so with that, um, Lord willing, you brothers and sisters out there was edified through the spirit of how by Shema was shining, and we're gonna close out by giving our praise and glory once again unto Yahweh. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings unto the elect out there. Shalom. Shalom.